Not a chance. Our new Chevrolet rides smoother and gives more all-around comfort than any car we ever owned. That's right. That's why we bought it. But you know, I can't imagine what they've done to make it that way. Well, lots of things. Things you can't see. Hidden values. Now, you take that easy steering... Oh, I oh boy. Remember me? I'm your wife, not one of your engineering friends. Oh, even you can understand this. Years ago, Front wheels had a solid front axle. When one wheel went over a bump, the other wheel bumped too. The steering wheel jerked, and passengers rocked and jolted. Then they figured out how to suspend the wheel separately. Something like this. With the wheels on separate axles, they can't pass bumps to each other. So, bumps have less effect on steering. Our Chevrolets have had that kind of front wheel suspension for a long time. But, the engineers still weren't satisfied with the steering. You see, front wheels are connected to the steering by what they call tie rods. And because the steering wheel is over on the left side, one tie rod was longer than the other. It was like, well, imagine trying to steer a rowboat with one oar longer than the other. With oars of unequal length, you'd have to pull hard on the short oar to get the same steering effect as an easier pull on the long oar. Here's what happens in the automobile. To steer the wheels, you have to push the tie rods. And remembering the rowboat, you can see that you'll have to move the tie rods different distances to get the same steering results. Also, as the front wheels bump up and down, the tie rods turn them slightly. Both wheels turn inward, but because of the unequal tie rods, one wheel often turns more than the other. So, in straight-ahead driving on rough roads, unequal tie rods can make a car pull slightly to one side. Not good, huh? No, and a difficult engineering problem to boot. But if the tie rods were of practically equal length, each would move the same distance to get the same steering result, and bumps would have an equal effect on the wheels. Yes, there were a lot of problems involved in designing such a system, but we have it on our new Chevrolet. The tie rods are now practically equal in length, and they're connected to the steering wheel through a third arm called an idler arm. This even balancing of the steering system makes it less work to steer, and we get practically no road shock through the steering wheel, no wheel fight. That's center point steering, what makes our new Chevy seem to sense where you want it to go. A car with road sense. That's a good name for it. Say, where are the kids? Over there on the teeter-totter. Do you think Kathy's all right? She's in the best spot. They bounce hard, Kathy gets a smooth ride. And that very same idea is one reason for the smooth ride we get in the new Chevrolet. What idea? Well, a car acts sort of like a teeter-totter. When you drive over bumps, it rocks up and down. In some cars, the back seat is over the rear wheels, where passengers bump up and down like the kids on the end of the teeter-totter. In our new car, the seats are between the wheels, where you get the smoothest ride, like Kathy at the center point of the teeter-totter. With center point seating, all passengers get a front seat ride. But center point seating is just one of the reasons why our new car rides so comfortably. Another reason is what they did with the rear springs. Well, uh, this'll take some pretending, but 
Well, just imagine this chain is a rear spring, and the flashlight is a gadget called a shackle. A shackle? Yeah, a kind of pivot. The spring is fastened to the frame at the front, shackle at the rear. When a bump pushes the wheel up, shackle and spring act to cushion the shock. Now, with ordinary springs and shackles, one passenger in the car gets quite a jolt from each bump. The springs are too stiff. However, three passengers get a pretty good ride. Five passengers can hit bottom. The spring is too stiff for light loads, too soft for heavy loads. Finding a spring system that will give the same smooth ride regardless of the number of passengers. But they finally found a solution. Part of it was timing the shackle so the angle between the shackle and the spring was much wider. Then they put in a softer spring to give the single passenger a comfortable ride. With heavier loads, the shackle moves back, stretching the spring to stiffen it. The more passengers, the farther the spring is stretched, and the stiffer it gets to cushion the heavier load. And that's our new Chevy. Softer rear springs with a shackle designed to give just the right spring tension for a comfortable ride, whether it's carrying one passenger or five. So that's why the car seems to ride the same, whether I'm driving alone or with the whole family. That's right, but there's even more to our new Chevy's riding needs. Next time we go to the airport, watch the landing gear while an airplane lands, and notice how the shock absorbers cushion the tremendous weight of the plane as it hits the ground. The action of the shock absorber piston sliding into an oil-filled cylinder absorbs much of the shock. Let's make a model. We'll use this for the piston and this for the cylinder with water instead of the oil. Now, when a bump pushes the piston, uh-oh, I forgot something. These holes represent the valves in a real shock absorber which control the fluid flow when the piston is pushed down. They permit the piston to slide down the cylinder, but slowly. On the rebound, a spring pushes the piston up, and again, the fluid controls the action. Our Chevrolet shock absorbers are now this same type. When we hit a bump, they smother the shock by slowing down its effect. One of these direct double-acting shock absorbers is mounted in each front suspension unit teamed up with the strong coil springs. In the rear, the same kind of shock absorbers are placed diagonally instead of straight up and down. This is so they'll act like the braces on the swing the kids are using. They steady the body of the car on curves and in crosswind driving. So you see, there are three big reasons why our new Chevy rides so much easier. The center point seating, the new spring and shackle arrangement, and the new airplane type shock absorbers. You'd never think simple things like that could make so much difference. Simple, she says. They seem simple after they're perfected. But what it takes to develop one of those simple things and make sure that it works. Why, do you John, know... John, don't you think Tommy's swinging Gail too hard? Oh, she knows how to hang on. Do you know of a better way to stir up a breeze? Sure, breezing along in our new car. Well, you got something there. You know, they call it the car that breathes. Up front, under the hood, are two air intake scoops leading to the passenger compartment. When the car is in motion, outside air is forced inside. The amount of air admitted can be controlled by vents, which open or close so you can have air from both scoops, from one, or from neither. Another thing, the air tunnels are slanted upward to help keep out dirt and water and screens and baffles make doubly sure only air can get through. Outside air also passes right through the heater core. So when the heater is on, the air is warmed as it's forced into the car and over the front seats into the rear compartment. Also, the tunnels beneath the front seats offer air circulation to ensure uniform temperature, front and rear. The blower builds up enough pressure to force stale air out as well as keep cold air from leaking in. The heater controls regulate the temperature of the air and the speed of the blower. For instance, in warm, rainy weather, you can turn the heat off entirely, turn the blower on, and fill the car with cool outside air. Our defroster is controlled just as easily. With the wide defroster slots beneath the windshield, 
ice, steam, and fog are melted away more rapidly than I ever thought possible. Yes, from the standpoint of passenger comfort and of smooth riding and driving ease, I think we've got a pretty good buy. Well, I'm satisfied. And I'm not too easily pleased, as you may have noticed. Yeah, don't I know. Of course, we've just talked about a few of the many things that made Chevy my number one choice. What's this? That's your dad's conception of our new Chevrolet. Ah, oh, you're kidding. Yes, son. It's the only way I could think of to show your mom the hidden values in our car. So when we get going, she'll know some of the reasons why we get all that big car performance from our new Chevrolet. Thank you.